Hello, I'm Tim Kirk and I'm the Master Shipwright for the Sutton Hoo Ships Company and today I'm going to take you on a tour around the long shed so come on in and we'll see what's happening. This is the long shed, we're situated on the waterfront in Woodbridge, Suffolk and this is a purpose-built community boat shed uh, the original purpose being for us to build the Anglo-Saxon longship from Sutton Hoo. We're on the site of the old Wistocks boatyard and when it was redeveloped this was specifically for us to build the ship. There are other projects going on here as well and there will be more projects in the future. The building is about 100 feet long so the ship fits in it nicely and it's about half that width. All the original excavation data is in this book. This is one of three volumes, The Sutton Hoo Ship Burial by Rupert Bruce Mitford. And uh, the information from here was put into a modern 3D computer program at Southampton University, which resulted in a modern set of uh, reconstruction drawings uh, from which we're going to build the ship. And the next stage from this data is to loft it, to draw it out full size, which is on the boards behind me. These are our lofting boards, which are effectively the shape of the ship drawn out both at full size and at one fifth scale for the small model that we've built to take all our dimensions from. This is our one fifth scale model of the ship and its purpose is to enable us to check the drawings, to check that we've got a buildable ship and also for us to experiment with different plank runs and keel thicknesses and all those types of different factors that, that might come into the build of the ship. So it's a very interesting stage at the moment because we're just beginning to set out the planking on it. So the model is made of these temporary moulds, like the ship will be built from. And then it'll have the proper full-size moulds put in. And then this model will be using plywood planking, whereas the ship itself will have the proper inch-thick oak planking. This is our general workshop area, and all sorts of things happen here. We've got a team from the Woodbridge Coastal Rowing Club building a St. Ailes skiff. We've got the sole boards from Say Wolfing, which is the uh, half length version of the ship that was built in the 1990s. They're being restored and repainted. Um, we make all our patterns in this area and it's just a, a generally very useful area to work in. This is one of our plywood patterns. In this case, it's for the lower stem section. And uh, this, this is taken from the lofting and it gives us the correct shape of the outside of the lower part of the stem. And what we do is we take that, we've moved on a bit here, but we can take that to the tree or to the piece of timber and put it on and ensure that the piece that we cut from it is the correct shape. Joe's working on the bow underlout. And the underlout is the extension piece to the keel and the transition piece into the stem and the stern post. This is the forward end, the bow, and what Joe's actually doing is um, cutting in the bevel that the plank will sit against. The ship has 26 frames and most of them will be uh, multi-piece, but at the very end, aft end of the ship, we have a single Y-shaped frame. So here's the pattern that we cut for this frame. And here's a piece of timber which came from a, a tree that was fallen in a gale last year. And hope, we're hoping that this pattern and this fork will give us the aftermost frame of the ship. Behind me is the stern underlap. So that performs the same function as the bow underlout, but it's at the back end of the ship. And this one 
uh, incorporates the extra length for the piece of keel that we had to cut off due to the knot that's there. And uh, again, this one, we're working entirely with traditional tools, with axes, to give us a comparison between how long that would have taken the Saxons compared to how long it might take us using more modern tooling. Over here, we have the keel for the ship. This is now finished. It's a piece of oak, 42 feet long, although we had to cut the aft three feet off it because of a knot that was there. Um, but it's from a single tree, which we found at a Forestry England plantation uh, near Swindon. Uh, it's now complete and finished and it's ready to sit on the strong back and we can then put the moulds onto it and begin to plank the ship. This is the forward end of the keel and showing the scarf where it joins onto the underlout. Now the underlout is a transition piece which continues the length of the keel and then begins to curve up into the shape of the stem. The keel's finished now and it's ready to go onto the strong back so that we can then mount the temporary frames onto it and begin planking the ship. Here at the front of the long shed, we've got our midships model. This is a full scale model of the middle part of the ship. It has two functions. First of all, it's uh, to enable our volunteers to learn the techniques of clinker boat building some of whom haven't done any of this before. And then secondly, it enables us to look at some of the interior fit out of the ship. So the height of the floor, the sole, the height of the thwarts, the seats that the rowers would have sat on and where those thwarts sit in relation to the rest of the ship. For the lower part of the ship, we use modern copper boat nails just because they were simpler to, to fix it with. But here, on this strake, we've begun to experiment with proper iron nails, uh, similar in size and material to those that we'll use to build the ship, the full-size ship with. Now, some of these have worked better than others. Uh, this is probably the best one, which is a proper diamond shape to the rove. Some of these are not correctly set square and haven't actually nailed over fully and correctly. But this is all part of the process of building the ship. It's all experimental archaeology. A modern clinker built ship wouldn't have corking between the planking. But we know that both the Saxons and the Vikings did cork their vessels. So we've done a separate set of trials uh, at various different scales to investigate how this works and, and which might be most effective for us. So this is the earlier Saxon one and it entails a layer of high-grade woolen fabric set in a mix of beef, beef fat and uh, beeswax. Uh, so we've put this together and we've put a section into a box here so that we could fill it with water and then just test how quickly it leaked. The Viking method of corking was to take a skein of spun wool and to set it in a groove in the plank and then uh, bed it all in pine tar. And so again, we've, we've looked at that and surprisingly, perhaps not surprisingly, both methods work well. Um, but as this is the more authentic Saxon method, we're probably going to use this method on the full size ship. Well, I'm now sat in the midship's model. And one of the purposes of this is to work out the geometry for the rowing. So the seat heights and the, the floor height and um, where, the, where the rowers would sit in the length of the ship. And the only original uh, idea of where this might be from the archeology span was these tholes and they are what the oars pull against to drive the ship through the water. But from those, knowing those heights and locations, we can then locate the thwarts, the seats, both in height and in uh, distance away from the tholes in order to get a decent pulling stroke. 
Now, we're not sure what type of stroke they would have used. It's certainly very different to what a modern rower would be familiar with. Probably a very high finish to the stroke. But this has been a very useful model for us and our experimentations here still aren't finished. So as we go on, we'll find the exact correct way that it should have been done. As well as looking at the construction of the ship, we're actually looking forwards as to how she might be finished, what she might look like when she's in the water. And with that in mind, we've made these sample boards, which we've coated up with various types of oils and tars um, to see how well they last and how much they fade in sunlight. Uh, we've also got one here, which is uh, carved. We may, may, end up, may put in some carved decoration on the ship. We've got both raw linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, and various types of um, tar oils. And this one is just one that will go actually under the water. This probably won't last very well under the water, but we're going to try it anyway and see how that performs. Running down the center of the long shed, we've got the strong back, this black painted structure. These posts are what the ship will be built on and they take all the, the weight and strain of the ship as she's being built. You can see from the curve here, the shape that the keel will take up when it's set on here. Once we've got the keel on the strong back, then we'll set up the temporary molds, which give us the shape of the ship and then we'll begin to plank her and the build will really begin to, to take shape then. And we'll begin to the, see the ship as she's not been seen in 1400 years nearly. Right, so that concludes our tour of the long shed today. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and look out for our next instalment.